Okay, discuss whether indirect taxes on petrol and diesel fuel in the UK should be reduced. Uh, this is from the January 2010 OCR 581 exam. Uh, this is another taking another look at the same essay I've examined earlier. Uh, I started to read this one, and in particular, it starts off with a lot of definitions and early diagrams, and I thought it seemed pretty uh, formulaic and robotic. But once you get to about the middle of this essay, it really starts to flow and uh, brings it, and it comes home really well in the evaluation. So let's get started taking a look. Indirect tax is a tax levied on expenditure on goods or services. This is a tax that is paid by the seller, so this decrease de decreases the supply, and therefore market price will increase and demand will decrease. All right, here's a diagram of how it works, good, and an explanation to follow, talking about the shift from S1 to S2, price going up from P1 to P2, quantity being decreased uh, from Q1 to Q2, and then indirect tax being imposed on a demerit good, the consideration of fuel as a demerit good, which may be overconsumed because its true harm is unknown. And then there's an analysis of how the indirect tax works, and that's been explained. Then an explanation of why the government imposes indirect tax to oil, uh, because of the harm it does to the environment, also because uh, it's scarce, and then the, the supply of it may run out if there was limited taxation. So the government is trying to fix market failure, and a definition of market failure is included, and an explanation then in this following paragraph here. Right, there are many reasons why prices should be reduced. Uh, the massive increase leads to a lot of people suffering. Truck operators and bus companies are high consumer, well, high fuel users, and they claim that some companies have been driven out of business as a result of the high indirect tax. Okay, there's a great argument there. But the government is benefiting from the billions of tax revenue, whereas the individuals are suffering from it. True. This causes government failure, as many businesses and individuals are suffering as a result of this government intervention. And this is market failure caused by the government. Good. Customers and jobs are also lost, and this causes unemployment. All suppliers also lose money as a result of this indirect tax because they are the ones who pay the tax, and they will need to increase the price they're selling it at and decrease the demand and their overall revenue will decrease. I would like yet to read an article about an oil supplier who actually is losing revenue due to uh, various tax, uh, yeah, various taxes being placed on petrol well, in the UK. All right, so I, I don't necessarily know if I'd make that argument. It depends on how we examine which oil suppliers we're looking at, but to me, I don't really think they bear the burden of the tax. It's mostly borne by the consumer, and it's... In this case study, I think there was a point being made that there was elastic demand, but uh, generally we assume that there's inelastic demand. But this point is okay given the context of the case, giving us the information that it could be considered elastic. Uh, many businesses are being affected as a result of this, and this damages the economic welfare. True. This could cause a lot of harm to the UK economy and should be stopped by reducing the indirect tax. Okay. This would also mean that low-income families will not be able to have their own cars and they may find traveling harder. And this is unfair, which would lead to equ uh, equity, reducing the tax. Uh, I think the, the word you wanted to use here was inequity. Right? The tax as it is leads to inequity, which is the unequal distribution of income, and it's another type of market failure. Although increasing the price will fix some market failure, it may cause other. And this is really where the, uh, this is really where the essay started to pick up speed. It just flows so well from here. However, there are many reasons why prices in petrol and diesel should not be reduced. An important reason is that the high prices of these fuels decrease the CO2 emissions, and this would have a long-term benefit. So long-term benefit discussed, sustainability, improvements to the environment. You have the availability of public transport to use as a substitute. We don't all need cars. We use buses and trains. They're sustainable and more cheaper. Uh, and they're cheaper. The price elasticity, according to the case, means it's elastic. So that means that the increase in tax will be effective. Uh, so I really like the way this paragraph came together. Uh, dropping below here, you know, reiteration of earlier points. Uh, petrol and diesel is a scarce resource. We have limited amounts. We could run out if prices are not kept high. Uh, if the indirect tax is reduced, we could run out quicker. And the best way to do this is through an indirect tax. Uh, and if we don't use them efficiently and effectively, we can cause market failure. So we should only use it when we need to, and people need to think about when they use it. Use a bus or train instead of driving. It costs less, it's more beneficial to third parties. Not driving will be better for the environment and for future generations. So we have a better world now in the future. Excellent. These two paragraphs were just perfect. Uh, this evaluation I really enjoyed reading. Uh, I think that the indirect tax on petrol and diesel fuel in the UK should not be reduced because it is decreasing the consumption 
of which is beneficial to us. It is a scarce resource and is important that we do not use it all up too quickly. There are disadvantages with not reducing the tax, causing unemployment and potentially businesses. I don't know if I'd use the word collapsing, but um, you know, use another word. Don't uh, make it seem as like it's Armageddon. You know, everyone, every student seems to write this like businesses will go bankrupt or businesses will collapse. And you know, don't be so uh, dramatic. Find another word. It's like businesses suffering is okay. Uh, it can be fixed by using the revenue generated from the tax into these areas. The government can subsidize into these companies that are collapsing due to, or suffering due to high prices of oil. Or this could be, or you could write government government can subsidize into these companies that are facing higher costs due to the higher price of oil. And this would decrease unemployment. Companies will be earning more profit. Yeah, the extra cash, I prefer the word money, can also be used in other areas such as the NHS or education. Remember, when you say cash, you're talking about coins and notes. Right? Often they deal electronically with money, so don't use that. Um, when you're using cash, you sound like a year ten student, right? Use the word money. Don't use cash. Unless you're talking about the actual physical note and coins. The extra money can be used in other areas such as the NHS or education. CO2 emissions and the lack of fuel cannot be fixed with money, so the way of fixing it is to keep the high indirect tax. For low income families, they can use alternatives such as public transport. The money from tax revenue can also go to public transport and make it easier for the public to use. So, good, you know, what can the government do with all this money? Uh, let's not reduce the indirect tax, let's try a different method, okay? Uh, I've given this an 18 out of 18. But I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to change it to 16 out of 18. And the reason being this. Uh, you don't, you do discuss the alternative, right? The subsidies and the amount of assistance the government can give. I, I think I'm being picky by giving you a 16. I think a lot of people will argue that this is either between 16 out of 18 or 17 out of 18. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody actually awarded this 18. Now, the thing that I wanted to see more often is this alternative being suggest, uh, being developed in greater detail? All right, maybe this might be me asking for too much, uh, but in, you know, show a graph of a subsidy, how it's effective, and then talk about how that could help the businesses that are suffering from the indirect tax on oil. But again, me being picky, this is probably a perfect essay. Well done.